Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to take your video from this to this. That's right, today's video is all about post-processing and how to really step up your art to make it really pop and just be overall better. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do and what I always do is to make it shine a bit more is we add an add glow layer. So we have the entire artwork bounced out. So we have just the character right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer. And we are going to take an add glow layer. Uh, in Photoshop, it is a linear dodge. So that's the name you're looking for if you're using Photoshop. And because the skin is kind of reddish orange, we're going to take an airbrush. We're gonna make sure it's soft and the settings are really low and we're just gonna add a very saturated orange on the places where the light is touching. Of course, add some to the hair too because the hair needs a bit of love. And maybe some to the tights where the light is hitting a bit better. I'm gonna erase that because that's just a bit too much. There we go. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add a tonal curve and I'm gonna explain to you how the tonal curve works so don't freak out I'm gonna break it down for you as simply as I can we are gonna go to layer new correction layer tonal curve now let me explain to you real quick how this works everything on the right so this whole area right here is the brighter part of the artwork and over here to the left is the darker area so if I were to move this up I would be making it brighter or darker in the lighter areas. Same here. If I move it up, it's going to make the dark areas brighter or darker. But I'm not focused on the RGB. I want to add just red. So what we do is we go to just the red area. And let me explain my thought process here. So the skin itself is a lighter color and I want that to be more red because one I think that red looks better in places what like skin or the shine I like warm light so I go to the to the right hand side to slowly add a bit of red to it to make it seem more warm I then subtract red from the shadows to make them more cool I skip the green layer I usually don't mess around in the green I go to blue I'm going to reduce the amount of blue in the warm areas and then cool off the shadows by adding blue to it. And we're going to go till it looks kind of nice. This will be at your discretion. If One thing I do need to say though is be very careful you don't add too much because it'll overwhelm the artwork and make it seem kind of crazy. So truthfully, less is more. We are then going to add a level correction. So we've got a new correction layer, level. And the same principle applies. Right is brighter, left is darker. And I don't want any solid blacks in this artwork. Some people like solid black um, for contrast, but anime in general doesn't have an extreme amount of contrast usually, so what I'm going to do is in the output, I'm going to make the darker areas not as dark so that there isn't a solid black in the artwork. I'm then going to increase the shadows in the middle to kind of make it seem like it's darker without it actually being darker. And that's how we do level correction. Now what we're going to do here is uh, this might seem kind of crazy but we're gonna go to the folder layer we're gonna right click it we're going to hit convert layer. Make sure keep original layers there so you don't lose your progress. Make it a raster layer and that moves the entire artwork, makes a copy of it. So now what we can do is we can add a cool effect like this. So we're gonna convert layer again, and what that's gonna do is, go, is it's gonna make a copy. We're gonna set it to hard light. This is how you add that cool anime-esque glow that anime tends to have. We're going to blur it using Gaussian blur. We're gonna go almost a quarter or halfway there. And you, you're going to notice the contrast is popping a lot more. So we're going to reduce the opacity of this layer to right about here. And what that does is it's going to just add kind of this cool glow effect to it. 
and then we are going to add a color balance layer. Now, this one's a bit tricky to do because you're basically just eyeballing it. So go to new correction layer, we're going to go to color balance. Now, this can be tricky. Um, don't keep the brightness, I find that makes it look too harsh. In the highlights, we want the highlights to be more red, and maybe we'll add a little bit of blue to it. A half tone, we're going to add more red, a little bit of blue. Shadow, we're going to add quite a bit of blue, and maybe reduce it to be more cyan. We're then going to adjust the opacity to where it looks right to us. I'd say right about here looks good. Now, I'm going to show you um, Clip Studios, Filter, and Effects. We are going to, oh, well first we got to make sure we have this all in a folder. We're going to convert, layer, and once again we have a cool copy. Well, I accidentally didn't add this, there we go, that's better, my bad. Make a copy. We're gonna hide the original layer. We're gonna go filter, effect, chromatic abrasion. Now, this is fine. It's not wrong to use it this way. The issue I have with it personally is it does not give me full control over the chromatic abrasion. And that might not be a deal breaker for you, but it is for me. So I'm going to leave in the comments this particular auto action so you have access to it and you can do what I'm about to do. So this adds chromatic abrasion by itself but since we have full control I will now go to the liquify tool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the chromatic abrasion very dramatic by just moving things over ever so slightly. All right, that looks pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge the layers together. We're gonna go to Filter, Effect, Noise. And that is where we're gonna add kind of the grainy texture to it. And we want it to be subtle. We don't want it to be super imposing over it. it otherwise it'll just, instead of looking like a texture, it's gonna turn it into kind of a low quality image and we don't want that. So then we're gonna add some dust using um, the droplet feature in Photoshop, sorry, in Clip Studio Paint. Then we're just gonna add little specks of dust around the artwork to kind of make it pop a bit. Do both white and black dust. Then we have our finished artwork. And I hope that helps. Uh, if you wanna learn some more about post-processing, some other effects, let me know and I'll get that done for you. All right, thank you, bye.